In this video, we'll introduce the idea of the trace determinant plane for helping to analyze what a constant coefficient system does without having to actually solve out for the general solution. It's one of the best ways to visualize all of these things all at once together, right? You have your real and distinct eigenvalues where you get nodal sources, nodal sinks, and saddles, and you have your spirals, and you have your repeated um, improper nodes. All of these things all come together, and a way to visualize that sort of combination is through the trace determinant plane. So I'm saying a bunch of words here that I haven't defined yet. So let's do that part first. So what do I mean by the trace? For any square matrix A, the trace is the sum of the diagonal elements. So for example, if I take the matrix 1, 5, minus 3, minus 4, the trace here is the sum of the things on the diagonal, so it's just minus 3. I'll be denoted TR of A will be negative 3. Now the determinant part we already know, as a reminder, the determinant of a matrix A can be computed by row reduction or by expansion by cofactors. It indicates invertibility, whether it's zero or not, and more generally gives an idea of how a matrix scales vectors. So to see what's going on here, let's look at a general two by two matrix and compute these two things. So if I have a generic two by two matrix with values A, B, C, and D, what are these two things? Well, the trace is new. We know how to do that. It's just adding up the diagonal elements. It's just gonna be A plus D. And what's the determinant? Well, for two by twos, we don't need any of those fancy tricks. We have a formula for it. It's just AD minus BC. All right, hang on to those for a second. We'll come back. How does this relate? Well, let's take that same general matrix and look to find the eigenvalues. So if I have my general matrix A, B, C, and D, and I'm gonna call this matrix A, then A minus lambda I, I subtract lambda off the diagonal. A minus lambda, B, C, D minus lambda, and I can find this determinant. And if I do that, I will get A minus lambda, D minus lambda minus B, C, lambda squared plus, let's see, when I do the middle term, I'll see a minus A lambda and a minus D lambda. So I'll write this instead as minus A plus D lambda, and then plus A, D minus B, C. Do any of those things look familiar? Hopefully they do. This is exactly the trace, and this is exactly the determinant. So what we really have is that for a two by two matrix, the characteristic polynomial is always of this form. Lambda squared minus trace of A times lambda plus determinant of A. And for the sake of notation, I'm just gonna call this T and this D from now on, just for the sake of writing things out a little bit easier. So it means that just by knowing the trace and determinant, I can write this polynomial and can therefore look for the eigenvalues. So from trace and determinant alone, I can set up this polynomial and determine the eigenvalues. So a couple other points here that are of interest that come from this fact and basic properties of quadratic polynomials and their roots is the following. So property one, the trace of a matrix A always equals the sum of the eigenvalues of the matrix. And if you think about it, if I have a quadratic that factors as lambda minus R1 times lambda minus R2, the middle term is exactly negative R1 plus R2. And in a similar vein, the determinant of A equals the product of the eigenvalues of A. Now these two facts hold even beyond two by two. These hold no matter what. It is always the case that for any square matrix, the trace is always the sum of the eigenvalues and the determinant is always the product of the eigenvalues of that matrix. It's not as easy to prove for bigger matrices, but it is still the case. Right, this also means that, for instance, if zero is an eigenvalue of the matrix, then it's not invertible because it makes the product of the eigenvalues being zero, so the determinant is zero, so it's not invertible. Think of that come as a consequence. So what we're gonna do is basically think about, in terms of T and D, what kind of general solution and phase portrait do I get? Right, so now we have these two things, the trace and the determinant. So I'm gonna set up the trace determinant plane and figure out where on this plane I get certain types of solutions because like we say here, 
knowing those two things dictates the eigenvalues and the eigenvalues dictate the kind of solution that you get from this system. So what does this tell us? Well, we know that our polynomial for this summation for the eigenvalues is lambda squared minus t lambda plus d. So let's find the eigenvalues. From the quadratic formula, I will get that lambda should be t plus or minus the square root of negative t squared, it's just t squared, minus four times one times d all over two. So it's t plus or minus square root of t squared minus four d all over two. And again, you can see if I add them together, I will get t. You work out after the product, I get d. It all works out nicely if you work all this stuff out here. But what's the key here? Well, all of the different properties of the solution is based on what these eigenvalues are. So, for example, if t squared minus 4d is negative, this means I get complex eigenvalues. Why? Well, t squared minus 4d is my discriminant here. If that's negative, everything's complex, that complex eigenvalues. Stepping beyond that, the real part of that eigenvalue is t over two. If the real part is positive, I get a spiral source. If it's negative, I get a spiral sink. So that's dictated by t itself. So for instance, from that, I could follow that if t is positive, this is a spiral source. If t is negative, spiral sink. And if t equals zero, center. Because so as a complex eigenvalue of zero real part, that's a center. And you can build from here, right? T squared minus four D positive means real and distinct roots. If that's the case, we still have three different options here. We have saddles, sources, and sinks. But how do I know when I have a saddle? Well, I have a saddle when my eigenvalues are opposite signs. The determinant is the product of the eigenvalues. And so if that's negative, that means I have two opposite sign eigenvalues. And so from here, D is negative, means I have a saddle. And then if t is positive, I get a source. And if d is also positive. And then t negative d positive means I have a nodal sink. Because the d positive means both eigenvalues are the same sign. And if t is positive, the t plus root is positive. So all the eigenvalues are positive, And therefore, we get a nodal source. And so you can see that the sort of key factor here is this relationship, and this being equal to zero means I have repeated eigenvalues. So the key point here, the key points or lines to be aware of are t squared minus four d equals zero, the t axis and the d axis. In general, when we plot this out, we're gonna write this as d equals t squared over four, and then we will draw a pair of axes and we will put t on the horizontal axis and d on the vertical axis and use that to sketch out our graph. So that's how we use this idea of the trace determinant plane to help us analyze what's gonna to happen to one of these constant coefficient systems. Even if we don't wanna do all the nasty work to write the general solution out, we can still use just the info at hand here with just knowing T and D to figure out what's gonna to happen to that system. A lot of times all you really need is the general idea of the behavior and you can use this info and this plane idea to get to it.